Hey everybody, we're going to reason from tabular data. Three examples. Let y of t represent the population of a town over a 30 year period, where y is a differentiable function of time. So as you guys decode the problem, make sure you're paying attention to kind of those key words. If you were to take this, um, this data here and plot these points and create a graph, you would want to be certain not to have any sharp turns or vertical tangents. Uh, the graph is continuous, of course, everywhere. All right, the table shows the population at selected times. Pay attention to the labeling, the units on both your input and your output, your X and your Y, if you will. So we have time in years and Y is in people. Use data from the table to find an approximation. So always kind of slow down when you see that word. For Y prime of 21, we're going to indicate our units of measure and we're going to explain the meaning of y prime of 21 with context. And of course show the work that leads to your answer. So they don't want just an answer, they're willing to give you points for showing the setup. Finding an approximation, y prime of 21, the slope of whatever the y equation is at 21. I don't have an equation for y that I can differentiate and evaluate at 21. So the best I can do is locate the time, the year of 21, find out between what two time values it falls, okay, and then use these two ordered pairs right here okay, to help me calculate the average rate of change. Okay, so this is approximately, be, you know, be mindful of that. If you're approximating, use the approximate symbol. Okay, I'm going to find y of 23 minus y of 20 over the difference 23 minus 20. This setup is not necessary to get you credit, but certainly this is right here. So delta y over delta x. You might want to go ahead and put your labels here. This is people. You're subtracting y values, still their units of people. Still their units of years. Remember, for a rate of change, our units are y units divided by x units. And if you fill in the units right here, you won't forget later. Okay? Performing the necessary calculations, you get 449 people per year. Always go back and look at the problem and make sure you've answered every part of the question. I haven't. Let's explain the meaning of this rate. It's always good to throw the word rate in. We know it's a rate of change. This means the rate at which the population is changing Okay, and right here I'm going to put the units. Okay, the answer is going to have a unit of people per year and people per year. One last thing so we want to talk about the answer and then we want to talk about the input at t equals 21 years. Right, we're going to use data from the table and a trapezoidal approximation with four subintervals. So I immediately go up here and I look at the data table. Okay, I notice that the difference between consecutive times Okay, the difference here, I'd have four um, sections, if you will. We're going to use the data and a trapezoidal approximation with four subintervals to approximate an average population over a 30-year period. All right, so I'm looking at calculating an average of the Y values here. Show my computations, indicate units of measure. Okay. Let's go ahead and show an integral that represents an average population, average y value, if you will. So it'd be 1 over b minus a.
This represents what they're asking us to find. Again, I don't have an equation for y. If I did, I would proceed by either using a calculator to find this value, or I would have to actually find this value by hand without a calculator before I divide it by 30. But I don't have an equation for y, so the best I can do is I can do a trapezoidal approximation. So approximately, at this point, I, I strongly encourage you to take these points right here and plot them real quickly on a grid. Okay, maybe 8 here, uh, 20, 23, 30. Okay, notice the y values are increasing. So maybe if this is 5,000 and 10,000, just to get an idea of what we're doing. This is the order pair 0, 5, the initial population. Uh, and then the population just increases from there. Now, perhaps it is decreasing in between these data points. I don't know that. Okay. And I'm not told whether it's concave up or concave down. All I can do is just kind of estimate what the graph looks like. All right, so this is the data. I can't make up data points between these given time values, so all I can do is work with the time values they give me, the data points they give me. Okay, at this point, if you need a visual of what I'm about to do with this data, okay, uh, the trapezoid here that I'm going to inscribe will help us understand the data. Okay, so trapezoidal approximation, given the data, I have to go from 0 to 8, go up to the curve on either side and connect them. The next partition would have us go from 8 to 20. It's a distance of 12. Go up to the curve, connect. Okay, the next distance or height of the next trapezoid would be 3. It's this distance. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, work with me. Uh, that's the trapezoid. And the final trapezoid is uh, 7 wide, or that's the height. Okay, and in each of these trapezoids, notice that the bases, the bases would, bases would be the y values here. Okay, so if you need to go back and, and plot the points just to help you get this started, I, I strongly encourage you to do so. All right, let's approximate this value. So I have the 1 over 30. So where I have my integral here, I'm just going to build this with a bunch of trapezoid area formulas. Okay, so the area in the first trapezoid. The formula has this one half. The distance is eight, which comes from us subtracting these time values and summing both the bases, the base at zero and the base at eight, which happens to be these two y values. So we're going to do this three more times. Horizontal distance between the next two is 12. So between these two data points, we're going to add those two y values. The next trapezoid is 3 wide. One more area formula for a trapezoid. Okay, when it's all said and done, I am going to switch to an equals because what I'm saying is that this whole expression equals uh, what I'm going to get here. Okay, and if all the calculations have been done correctly, you would get this right here. So for credit on an, for credit on an AP exam, you just need to show this setup right here and then you can kind of uh, simplify to this point. Okay, and as a final step, divide by 30 label my answer, and I'm good to go. And I know that the point one people might bother some of you guys, but no, unless they tell me to round to the nearest person, I'm not going to. Okay, so did I answer correctly? It's an average population. That number certainly seems to fit within, you know, what these numbers are right here. So it all seems good right here. All right, let's take a look at example two. The rate at which water flows into the tank in gallons per hour, it's indicated here, is given by a positive 
continuous function r of time. The table below shows the rate at selected values of time for a 12 hour period. We're going to use a midpoint Riemann sum with three sub intervals to approximate the value of the integral. If you remember when you integrate a rate you lose the rate and so your answer should be in gallons. We're going to approximate it with using a mid midpoint Riemann sum with three sub intervals and then we're going to explain the meaning of this definite integral in terms of the water flow using correct units and of course show the work that leads to our answer. Alright, so approximate is important. We don't have an equation to integrate so they're going to require us to estimate it, approximate, with a midpoint Riemann sum. Again, this is a manageable set of data. I strongly encourage you to quickly plot these points. Uh, you can see that your time values are increasing by 2. And again, it did tell us it's a positive continuous function R of time. So all these values are positive. And it looks like uh, they're all, it looks like it's increasing. Yeah, well, except for right here. The rate does uh, decrease a little bit. Okay, a midpoint Riemann sub, three sub intervals, so three rectangles. So you might want to come over here and do a little bit of side work here. Delta x, the width of each of three sub intervals. Okay, well, the entire interval covers 12 minus 0, three rectangles. The width of each rectangle will be four. So you might want to plot these points and draw in your midpoint rectangles. Okay, otherwise, I'm just going to work with the data. The first rectangle would cover a distance from 0 to 4. So its width is 4. I'm not going to use the data point at 0 or 4. I'm going to use the y value or the r value at 2, the midpoint between 0 and 4. So it's 4 times 13.4. Plus, for my second, subinterval. I'm going to now go from 4 to 8. Again, the visual of plotting the points might help you. Go from 4 to 8. The midpoint value I'm going to use is 4.3. So the area in that rectangle is 4 wide and 14.3 high. Then from 8 to 12, that horizontal distance is 4. We're not going to use these values here. At 8 and 12, we're going to use the 14.8. Again, if you need to, plot the points and scribe the midpoint rectangles. Okay, and once we do the calculations here, okay, we have 170 gallons. Make sure and put units on your answer. Remember, you integrate the rate, you lose the per hour. Okay, so we did do this. We have to explain the meaning of this definite integral using correct units. Okay, so let's kick that off using the integral. This means, okay, remember what this means. It means the change in the water in the tank Um, I did notice everything disappeared, but I'm hoping it comes back in gallons uh, from time equals zero to time equals 12 hours. So I wanted to address the answer that I'm going to get, which is going to be in gallons, and then I want to also address the, the, um, the limits. I don't know. I'm hoping you caught it up here earlier. If not, rewind. Oh, thank goodness. There it is. All right. To conclude this um, part of the problem in this video, um, let's take a look at this question. Okay, then it goes on to tell us that a model meaning an equation, a model for the rate of water flow is given by the function and perhaps this is the equation that generated the data. So just pay attention that this is a rate of change right here. It's a rate of water flow. 
Or maybe this is the equation that generated that data. Where the positive rate P is measured in gallons per hour and T is measured in hours. Use this equation to find the average water flow rate. So what we're doing is we're finding an average value. We're finding the average okay, of this rate right here. During the 12 hour time period, indicate units of measure. All right, so I want to find an average of this rate of change using this P equation. So that's your average value formula. Uh, so the time interval is what? Zero to 12 is your average value. So we're going to show the setup that leads to our answer. Excuse me, this should be right here a P. I'm using the P equation to approximate an average rate here. All right, and then from here, um, it looks like we're just going to go strictly to the calculator. So type in your P equation to Y1, necessary keystroke, <clears throat> calculate the value. It should come out as 169.2. Finish the calculations. Okay, now we're finding an average value, so we steal the Y units, and in this case, it's 14.1 gallons per hour. That makes sense. 14.1 seems like a, a reasonable number that would be an average you know, uh, rate of flow based on these numbers here. Okay, So make sure that you're practicing on the calculator, that you're doing the correct keystroke and getting this value right here. Okay. All right. In the next video, we'll look at example three.